on my YouTube website and some other friends of ours websites. Many of the videos we're going to show you were created through PowerPoint and Kevin Tiller through PhysEd Review is going to give you a tutorial on how to do that. A lot of these videos we're showing you, you can find descriptions in the bottom. This video is a combination of Washington DC sports teams, Washington Capitals, Washington Nationals. This next video I made is uh, the exact same video but minus the Washington DC professional sports teams, whereas this would have been DC United and this would have been the Washington Redskins. Now they're just basic sports teams. Students can work on their throwing technique of T point step throw. Here they're going to work, be working on their football skills. They can do punting over the field goal post or kicking off of a T. Each one of these videos we're giving you 10 second clips of each slide and as I said you can find these videos on YouTube, but the links are going to be provided below. Also, their Google link will be provided below through Google Drive. This is a basketball shooting one. Recommend using like a Nerf ball, a yarn ball for shooting, hand underneath the ball. This is a chest pass for basketball. Hold the ball close to your chest with two hands on the side. Step with your opposite foot and make a nice pass right into the emoji hands. This video is a combination of some net sports, such as lacrosse and soccer. Try to hit the target around the goalie. In this video, we're going to be showing you some net sports, such as indoor volleyball, beach volleyball, tennis, and badminton. There's four different slides of 40 seconds each. Try to use your racket sports. Recommend using just one student at a time. Have them taking turns because of the swinging of the rackets. Like to do some fall seasonal throwing stations. This is a fall seasonal station uh, with some scarecrows and crows and owls moving along. It can also be a shadow tag version where they stand in front of the screen with the shadow and they try to keep their shadow away from the moving objects. This is the same video, but added with uh, witches and ghosts. You can play it as a throwing or a shadow version. The shadow version is fun because they get up close to the screen, and we usually put the screen at a higher setting so the way their shadow can be on, the, on it, and they try to move their body left and right. This is a friend of mine, Brian McPherson from Pinebrook Elementary. When he's teaching the bones of the body, this is one of the stations he has set up where the students can throw balls at the different skeletons or bones as you go through his video description and below, link below. Uh, you'll find different bones they can throw at. Now Kevin Tiller with Fez Ed Review is going to take you through this next part. He's going to show you how to make your own. Hello everybody, this is Kevin Tiller from Fez Ed Review and I'm back to do a video on how I create a PowerPoint throwing activity with my students. Uh, I've been doing this about four years now, and the very first one that I actually created, I created using SpongeBob characters, so I'm going to actually show you how I do that uh, with SpongeBob characters. So what I've done is I've gone on the internet and I have saved some images. This is just sort of a uh, under-the-sea background, and all these images that I have here are PNG files, which means that there's no background behind the actual picture itself. It's a transparent background, and I'll show you how that looks when you put it into the presentation because it looks really cool. So I'm going to go to PowerPoint here, and I'm going to open up a, uh, a new slide or a new project. And I'm going to go in, and I'm going to delete the lettering here. And then I'll take the under the C theme and put it on top of the slide. Drag it to the corner, make it fit, stretch it all the way out. And then I'm going to go and take Mr. SpongeBob and put him on top. And as you can see, he looks really cool because there's no background. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to what's called the Animations tab. And then I'm going to click on Paths. And I always just do a Draw Scribble because it's easier for me to do it that way. So I'm just going to take my pen and I'm going to draw all the way around on the screen itself, on the background of the Under the Sea. And when I'm drawing, I'm just holding down. And then when I let go, you will see that SpongeBob is going to go really fast. So what i got to do is go up to Duration here. And I'm going to put 25 second duration, okay? And I'm going to put not on click, but I'm going to do it after 
previous. Okay. Then what you'll see is when I play it, you'll see that that's where he goes. He goes in the exact same pathway. Of course, he's a little bit slowed down now. And my students are taking a yarn ball, and they're back about 10 or 15 feet, and they're throwing, trying to tag SpongeBob with the ball. So once he stops, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another slide, and then I'll create another one after that so we have uh, just a few characters that, they can, that our students can throw at. So I will hit Copy and Paste, and I'm just going to take SpongeBob out of there. I'll delete him out. And then I'm going to take our friend Patrick and put him on the slide. And I'm going to make him a little bit smaller. I'll start him in this corner. Again, I'm going to Animations. I'm going to Paths. Draw a Scribble. So then I'll have Patrick just kind of waffling around different pathways. There's really no limit to this. It's just your imagination of how well you want him to move around. And again, once I let this go, he's going to go really fast. So I got to go up here, and I will click 30 seconds. Here, not on click, but after previous. So I'll have him ready to go, and then I will copy and paste. Again, get rid of Patrick there, and then I'm going to put uh, Mr. Krabs in here. So Mr. Krabs is on the screen. Now I'm going to do with Mr. Krabs something a little neat. I'm going to have him off screen, but when I do animations, you'll see what will happen. I draw my scribble. I draw it from him. So he's going to enter from the right, and then he's going to go back, and then he's going to come this way, maybe go around in the middle a little bit, and then go up to the top, and then come back, and then maybe exit on the left. So you see him go really fast. So again, I'm going to go 30 seconds, and then I'm going to hit on click after previous, and then I'm going to go to the slideshow itself, and I'm going to set up the show. And I want it to loop, because I don't want to have to sit there and continually press the space bar to have a new slideshow begin. So I hit loop continuously until escape. And then I'm going to go up to transitions and just make sure that it's not on mouse click. Every slide has to be on a different... Uh, you have to do this for every slide. So after one second, up here, I'm going to click that off. Click here, after one second. And then up here, again, off mouse click, after one second. And now I am done to show you my slideshow, so I'll go back to the beginning, and here he goes. So this is, again, it's just going to continually loop, so I don't have to be over there. Students are throwing at SpongeBob as he goes. And I usually have my projector up about, oh, I don't know, six feet off of the floor, so students' shadows aren't getting in the way of um, them throwing, so it works out really good that way. And obviously, the, uh, the darker that you have it, the, uh, the easier it will be for the students to see it. But it's just a fun activity that the students can actually you know, practice their throwing at moving targets. Uh, it's a safe activity. We're not worried about students throwing balls at each other. And uh, the kids love the, the animations and things like that, the pictures. I've also created a Star Wars one as well. If you know anything about me, I love Star Wars. But I figured I'd show you the way I originally started doing this was with SpongeBob. And then we got Mr. Krabs coming in, and here he comes off to the side. Get ready. Kids are like, where is he? Where is he? I can't see anything. Oh, there he is. So it's really kind of neat. And again, the images just kind of make it, make it look really, really cool. And uh, after Mr. Krabs goes and does his path for a little while, again, because I hit loop continuously until escape, you're going to see that after Mr. Krabs gets out of here, and then SpongeBob's going to appear again and he's back into the shadows playing once again. So there we go. That is again how I take a PowerPoint and create a overhand throwing target activity for my students. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. This is Kevin Tiller from Phys Ed Review signing off. Thank you, Kevin. Next, we're going to show you how to record your own videos using the iOS 11 software and the Apple products where you can uh, record the screen. Here I've swiped up and you can see the red blinking light. Now I'm recording the screen. I go to the Jitterbug app by Friskies. This is a fun one that's supposedly created for cats, but they swipe at the bugs. Now, what I did was in the app, 
you have to click on the bug on the screen to make the bug burst. I'm going ahead and popping on the bug so the students think that it's a but it's really not. This is another Friskies one called Cat Fishing. And here you're just trying to hit the fish. Same type of thing where on the screen you have to pop the fish yourself. You can have a student doing it or a teaching assistant doing it where they stand over there with the iPad and they keep popping the balloons or the, the fish as the students hit them. If you don't have someone to do the popping for you, this is where you can record the video yourself. Right now, I'm just recording the screen. You can record it for five minutes and then put it on the loop, or you can record it for 10 minutes solid and then save it as video. This is a bubble popping one. Same type of thing, but you're popping the bubbles. There's a lot more of them. You can do it where a teaching assistant does it or you do it beforehand. These are the different apps. This is Frisky's Jitterbug, Catfishing 2 by Nestle, and Kids Balloon Pop by Learned Letters, and then the Baby Bubbles Free. Now here's a Halloween app, same type of thing. It's going through and I'm just popping it on my iPad as I'm recording the screen. And then when I'm done, I go down and I uh, swipe up, just like we did where we started recording, then we stop recording. And then you go into edit video, and you can trim the ends off of it to where you get just the video you want. This is actually two different apps, and I'm going to show you here what those apps are. There was Halloween Smasher, and then there was Halloween Pumpkin Smash Party. This is a video by Eric DeVolt um, at Mr. Physical N. He did the old duck hunt. Love this video game. And you can find the description below and the link to it on YouTube on how you can just right click and loop and it will keep showing this video over and over and over. I hope your students have as much fun with these videos as my students do. Special thank you to Kevin Tiller. Brian McPherson and Eric DeVault. You can find their information in the description below. My name is Eric Turrell, and I hope your students love throwing at these videos.